Salem witch trials. That was the lyric they repeated 900 times. A movable yeah. city, the feet of engineering, and also poetry. poetry. Sorry, Mitch is <sighs> licking her asshole. She's licking her ass while also getting the hem of my pants at the same time. I know, I remember being like 12 years old and seeing an underfunded community center and being like, hey, okay, I just made a decision. <laughs> this is a White Star Line prepaid call from Iceberg, right ahead! It's been over a hundred years since the Titanic sunk into the North Atlantic Ocean. It's a pretty open and shut case. The ship hit an iceberg, case closed. But what aren't they telling us? What if two comedians tried to solve what really happened? This is Truth Tannic. Truth Tannic, the comedy podcast where we aim to uncover what really happened the night the Titanic sunk into the Atlantic Ocean. The North Atlantic Ocean. Thank you. You're welcome. My name is Carly. My name is Blair. And we're here with the oh last my- episode of season one. I can't believe it. I know. It feels like saying goodbye to a baby, but sort of like see you again in January. Exactly. You're sending your baby to special boarding school. Yeah, I'm sending my baby to to like the American Hogwarts. Yes. Salem Witches Institute. Yes. (laughs) Love it. (laughs) Love it. And then it's coming back in February. It's coming back in February. Yeah. So I guess we should just say it off the top of the episode if we're kind of alluding to it. Oh, yeah. We're doing Truth Tannic season two. Yes. We're not talking about the Titanic. No. I'm so sorry to the people on my YouTube channel who want me to talk about my life. It's not going to (laughs) happen. It simply won't. I mean, if you want to. I don't Maybe season three will just unpack your life from birth. My life story. To now, yeah. Yeah. See where where it all went wrong. (laughs) (laughs) Honestly, that would be so helpful for me. Yeah, I know. I think you need it. And Rob and I have been talking about it. Oh, yeah, privately. Yeah, yeah, privately. Yeah. Over uh, SMFs. 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 (laughs) SMFs. SMFs. <laughs> I don't Sexy know what I'm motherfuckers. saying. Sexy motherfuckers. So we're coming back in February, yes. tentatively. And tentatively. this time we're going to talk about the Salem witch trials. Yay. The Salem bitch trial. The, tra- the tra- Salem's? Salem, that's for bitches. Salem, that's for witches and bitches. And that's it. But yeah, right now in February, you know, we're going to say the new year just because, you know. That's the goal, but who the fuck knows? Who's, who the fuck knows? We got to take some time. First of all, I have to learn everything about the witches. Yes. Personally. I've said, I talked to you about it, and I'm going away to Mexico. Which is crazy. I know. It's so fun. <laughs> it's going to be a lot I'm of fun. I'm going away to Scarborough, Ontario. That's the, same, that's the Mexico of it's the, the GTA. It's the Mexico of the GTA. Yeah, it's a, a tropical location. Tropical, the bluffs. Mm-hmm. For anyone not from Toronto, Scarborough has very large cliffs. Yes. If you go down to this one really specific parts of it, the rest of it, no cliffs. No cliffs. <laughs> really flat. Just a single cliff. If you go, yeah, there's one big cliff if you go to this one I've place. never been. To the bluffs? No. We should go there. Yeah, beautiful. we should. I've heard amazing things. I did shrooms there this summer. It was, oh my God, I never wanted to leave. I, That's awesome. It was hard to get me to leave. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Especially walking through the sand on shrooms. Oh. Walking through sand is already kind of difficult. And if you say it's not, you're literally lying. No, if you, you that's not a girl's girl. No, when people are just like, like, I love running in sand. It's like, shut, shut the fuck shut up. up. What are you talking about? Also, it's really bad for your arches. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, like I'm just like, people who are like, it's just, it's natural. No, it's no, not. No, it's not. No, it's not. No. Like little crushed up rocks. No, it's not. No, Dumped it's not natural. Else. I've never seen an old photograph with sand in it. No, I literally I've prefer never seen a it. rocky cold beach. You know the beach at the beginning of um uh, a series of unfortunate events <laughs> yes. where the guy, uh, for Pat- <laughs> Timothy Spall comes in. Yes. Timothy Spall comes in to say like your parents have died in yes, a fire. Yes, yes. That's, that's what you my want. beach. That's my favorite I beach. I never read the series of unfortunate events growing up and I read them as like at like 18. Okay. And they're great. They are great. I didn't read all of them because like there's fucking there's 90. There's like 14 of them. But right? I read like the first five and they're fantastic. Also the yeah. new show, like I guess it's not really new. It's like seven years old. Mm. But they made that new one with Neil Patrick Harris yeah. as the count. It's phenomenal. I need to go back to it. I think I watched like a couple of episodes of it. It's very cool. And then I cool. was drunk or something. A show like that is nice because it gives like the director and the production free range to actually make a tonal choice. Yes. Like to actually make choices that are weird and interesting. And even the actors, like you're making yeah. big choices and that's fun to watch. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're doing the Salem Witch Trials. Yes. <laughs> we're so excited. So Carly's gonna I'm going go to, to Mexico, Mexico. But I'm going, I w- there's nothing I love more than when I'm on a vacation to just like read, just read to tuck into a book. Yes. Yeah. And I'm going to go to the BMV 
here in Toronto. I'm going to go to the Bloor <laughs> and spend a B&B and I'm going to yeah. pick because they always have like five or six Salem witch trial books. Oh. I already know a bit. I was definitely more into the Salem witch yeah, trials you, going on. you have for sure, you have said things in passing that I'm like, Harley knows more about the witches. Yeah, but you knew more about the Titanic. So it feels kind of like a fair switch Exactly. Off, a little bit where it's like- It's a lot of fun, but I don't know the main players. Like I know a lot about the, th like I know the timeline mm -hmm. quite well, but I don't know like the names and stuff. And I think it'll yeah. be very fun to Tichuba. talk about Puritans and stuff. I yeah, know Tichuba. Tichuba. Um, there's the other one, Abby Sarah, or something. Abby. I feel like there's an Abby. What's what's the one like Jesse Pryor or something Pryor? Yes. Mickey, Mindy Pryor. That's why I'm Pippi thinking Pryor. it's like Abby Pryor, but it's Abby not, Pryor? but it's something. Abby Rose. I saw Blah Blah with the devil. Yeah, I saw Bit Sicky, 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 Pryor? Sicky Pryor with the devil. Oh my God, what is we this? We have to look this up because I've had this? people come up to me recently I who are our friends. Sicky Pryor with being the devil. Like, listening to your podcast drives me insane because <laughs> you spend five minutes trying to think of the the title for something and I know it and I'm screaming yeah. it at you. You're screaming it into the microphone. I saw holding hands. I saw, I saw something prior with the devil. I saw Suki. Suki. It's from the Crucible. Maybe I'll come to the BMV with you. You should. I also need the books because I want to read. We could we could um read it together. That's true. We could do a book swap. Goody Proctor with the devil. Goody Proctor with the devil. <laughs> that took so Oh my long. God. And now we can move on. I saw Goody Proctor with the devil. Yes. Yeah, we should read The Crucible. We should read the, I bet they have we, the, should, we should read The Crucible and we should pick like a nonfiction. Yeah, a nonfiction, The Crucible. And then I feel like there must be other stuff too. Like some docs. We could do yeah, a documentary some docs. as well. So we got to do some research and then we'll come back with, a, a, with about... Expect the level of research that you got in Truth Tannic. Yes, well, maybe we're gonna, a bit worse. It, yes, or but I think the vibes will be even better. The vibes will be because well, this is get better hats. Yes, which and I'm excited anything about. I can blame on misogyny, I can bring a lot of energy to that. Yeah, exactly. There's very little misogyny in the Titanic. No, it's which like is truly one of the moments in history where women win. Women really win <laughs> in terms the of they, they get on the boats. It's the a men, there's a lot the of men. class problems. There's a lot of class problems, and you know, for sure, probably the women were still being treated badly. Yeah, but they get the boat. But the boat didn't sink because of misogyny. Or exactly. Did it? Exactly. Maybe it did. So we're coming back in February with the Salem Bitch Trials. Salem bitch and we're trials. so, fuck, I'm so excited. I'm really excited. We, we came up with it. We were, it, we're honestly planning to just do an eight episode thing. And then yeah. when we got to like episode four, we were like, hey guys. <laughs> Carly, you're so lying too. This was episode one. You were just like, should we do a season two of <laughs> Salem Witch Trials? Pitching it immediately. Yeah. Salem Witch Trials. <laughs> Salem witch trials. Yeah, but we're just having too much fun. We don't want it to end, so we're going to keep it going. Yeah, we've had such amazing feedback. So thank you to everybody yeah. who's been listening. Honestly, it's been so nice to read some of your emails and yeah, your messages. thank you for emailing. Like, it's very lovely to just get messages from people and they're like, I love listening to it. It's so much fun. It's like, thank because it's so much thank fun so much. for us to do. I know. We really have a good time and we hope we have a good time too. Like we were Maybe talking yesterday, we were supposed to record at like 10 a.m. and we had to switch it because we were like, if we record at 10 a.m., we will simply spend the day together, all yeah, of us. Exactly. <laughs> it's such a nightmare too. It's just like, uh, we have to- Nobody stops. I have a hard out. I have a hard, hard out we if we don't and end. We're like, okay, and I hear you about your hard out, <laughs> but I raise you group dinner. Yes. <laughs> I know. And I can't say no to group dinner. No, I won't. Gun I to my head. I was talking to my friend about this on the phone too, where I was just sort of like, yeah, I'm in like drinking less, which is nice. But you know, like I, I still make time for like group dinner and drinks. And she was like, that's drinking. That's still drinking, girl. Like, what are you doing? Um, but I just can't say no to it. Mm -hmm. I can't, I can't say no to group dinner. I can't say no to group drinks. It's one of the small pleasures in life. No, exactly. I had a friend once who was like, I'm not going to buy a house. So I'm going to go out for nice dinners. Yeah. And I did really like that. Oh, you know what I did yesterday? No. <sighs> rough. Uh -oh. So there's this, not really rough. There's this, uh, I'm going to make a YouTube channel recommendation and a TikTok recommendation if anybody's looking for good vibes. There's this, I don't remember her actual name, even though I looked it up yesterday. It's a cool name. But her username on Instagram and TikTok is Big Book Lady. But she also makes YouTube videos. And she's just like a cool girl living her life. And she reads that. like cool books. But she does really great vibey vlogs and she is just like a Montreal vibes, okay? Like- Is she in Montreal? No, I thought oh. she was in Montreal, but she is like, you know, there's just people who have like thick hair. Oh, She's like yeah. bangs and thick hair. And I'm like, oh my God, surely she does this. And then she'll like vlog when she wakes up and I'm like, why the fuck does your hair look this good? When you, it's no. Some people are blessed. Exactly, and, and she like she wears like so those unfair. like long kind of like plaid skirts with like hoodies and stuff. Like love her. She lives in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Oh my god! In like a cool neighborhood. Okay. And I weird. I was talking about it with Reese, who grew up in 
Manitoba and we were and I was like how expensive is it like we we're looking at houses and you should not look at houses in Winnipeg because you will be like you will be like I'm moving to Winnipeg yeah oh yeah there's like really cool shit oh also can I just say I just yeah. looked up big book lady this is the girl I was talking about who recommended Juno loves legs that book I talked really? about a few yeah so I have been she's following her great. I just didn't like She's, She's fantastic. Great. I had no clue she was in Winnipeg. Yeah, she. I know because I I saw her vlogs, and as a Canadian, you see like a Canadian landscape, and you go, "That's, That's fucking Canada. Canada. That's Canada. It's so flat. Oh Nothing has ever been more flat and gray in my entire Watching life." Watching Yellow Jackets, you're like, "That's Canada right the, there." They crash the plane. I'm like, "That's Canada. That's Canada. That's Canada." I don't even think they pretend it's not Canada. I watched on the show. American Psycho, and they shoot it in Toronto. They sh they oh, shot yeah. in Toronto. I'm like, "Oh my god." Canada. Oh, Canada. Oh, so it's Canada? It's something, there's something about it where it's just like, people be like, we're in Seattle. It's like, liar, you're in Vancouver. Like, liar. I don't know. I don't know what it is. You could just tell. You're saying that it's New York, but I know Suits, the cast yeah. of Suits. I know it's no. Toronto. It's just something too. And I feel like sometimes, a lot of times it has to do with like building height. Definitely. Especially if it's in a city. Because like Toronto is like a weird combination of tall and short. It's like we have I feel one like other eight block really tall building yes. area and then everything else is like three stories yeah it's, it's pretty, lovely we're pretty sure it's lovely which is nice because you do get some of the skies still yeah and it feels it allows you to you know i'm not going to dox myself but i live a little north of the city and it allows you to feel as though you're living in a more residential place yeah. while still being in the city well that's the thing i feel like my area i live in the west end i'll mm -hmm. dox myself yeah come find me i dare you <laughs> follow me home follow me home i don't care come in have some tea i actually want friends just kidding. Don't follow me. But uh, <laughs> it's the same. Like, it's kind of fun being like, I kind of live like in a little town within a bigger town. Like, yeah, it's, like, so it's nice. It's nice and spread out. Yeah. Um, but Big Look Lady is great. She's phenomenal. I find that like, I'm realizing I have kind of weird, like specific tastes in books. Yes. So it's hard for me to find. You're so weird. I'm so weird. And so, no, it's because I have bad taste. It's yeah. not that I have like, oh, I have such good taste. It's just like, I can't have fun, but I can't not have fun. I No, I at the feel same time. very much in that way of I'm such a snob, but <laughs> also like to have fun. Yeah. So it's just sort of like, and I read like also a lot of like non -fiction. You read, Yeah, you do. You read a, a, a bit of non-fiction. I'm pretty 50-50 Yeah, actually. which is, I feel like maybe it's not rare, but it feels rare to me because I read like, I'm like one in 10 is non-fiction. I know. I but you read a lot of I read a lot of non-fiction. I don't really know why. I think I'm You love to learn. I love to learn. I'm a nerd. But um, but yeah, one of the best books I read this year was uh, Juno Loves Legs by Carl Geary, which she yeah, recommended. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's really good. So if you're looking for like a book, it's pretty sad. Yeah. But it's kind of giving like fictionalized just kids in 80s Ireland. Oh, so, okay. I have to read that. Yeah. that is the Except it starts when they're like kids, kids, like they're little kids in it. Mm -hmm. But then they grow up. That's, I love yeah. that. But yeah, it's very cute. She's got um, great book recommendations her. and she also just brings really good vibes. She's very yes. cool. She's very effortlessly cool. So her vlogs are nice. They're also very chill because again, her channel is is still small-ish compared to like her, she's a, quite a big like TikTok and Instagram following, mm -hmm. but her YouTube channel is still kind of, it's a smaller following, which yeah. I mean is good. That is the best for vlogs. If somebody is. is over like 60K subscribers, I'm like, your vlogs just become shit. And that's a no. self read up. That's a read on myself <laughs> as well. Like it just happens because you don't want to share aspects of your life because it do, it feels much bigger than it is. Yeah, because you don't want to actually for and you, people to know where exactly, you are. And you feel, you don't feel the need to be, incredibly entertaining. Mm -hmm. So what that means is like a lot of like her vlogs, like they feel very authentic yeah. and chill and real, but also they look really great just because her apartment looks amazing. I know. And she's I always think about people like whenever I see someone who's like, this is like what I feel like my aesthetic would be if I had less shit in my apartment. I know. It feels so close, but yeah. not right. I know. Like she has like, you know, there's just like when you live in a city or an apartment and you just have like shitty bathroom. Yes. But her shitty bathroom it's looks so nice. cute, but my so shitty cute. bathroom just looks shitty. I know. I've got such like a suburban style yeah. bathroom. Your apartment is really nice. Thank you. Yes. I do like my apartment and it's really old, but like it's just been well kept. Yes. It's just so annoying. So now <laughs> I've got this like functional bathroom <laughs> that yeah. doesn't have like a standalone porcelain sink. Or like a weird broken wall to add to the vibe. Yes. I have a weird standalone sink and a makeshift <laughs> closet. And like where there's, we have like a medicine cabinet mirror where you like you pull the mirror up and there's a medicine cabinet. I miss that so No, but much. somebody has obviously taken the original door. So we have a new mirror that's, <laughs> that's smaller. Awesome. So the paint is different around it. So it's oh like my God. The, the paint color of like the blue of our bathroom. And then there's like a yellow underneath it. 
that's outside that's around that's awesome. the mirror and then our mirror <laughs> like but i i feel that way about the kitchen and the bathroom where i'm like i don't care enough yeah. To make it really cute. Like you've been to my house. My living room is so no, obviously you have where cute I live. Apartment. But it's so obviously like you're like, oh, I know what room oh, she yeah, spends yeah, yeah, yeah. time in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, like but having a bath and having to clean a bathtub is a nightmare. Oh, it's but awful. She like her vlogs are night like I feel like sometimes like if somebody's a smaller channel and they're vlogging, the only problem is they don't know how to make it look aesthetic yet. So it just kind of looks shit yeah like there's weird. like i always want to follow toronto vloggers because i love mm. my city but so often they live in like an ap like a condo and they can't yeah. add any vibes or people i know i follow this or i don't even follow her but she just like shows up on my tiktok and she's got this like cool like um like windows like her walls are just wow. windows so you can see exactly where she lives in the city and, and i'm like you know yeah. girl, like i I know, I know where you live. Yeah. Like, I can see, like, there are, like, four landmarks outside of your, like... That's rough. And You can't do that. They're nice. And, like, you're you're well lit. But I'm like, I know where you live. I know. Are it's always good? so rough. Um, but Big Book Lady, it because she is just good vibes, like, the, the, the vlogs look good just because her apartment yeah. is super nice. Do we want to talk about other stuff? Yeah. All Let's right. Let's do it. So, getting into kind of... We're titling this episode the title. Titanic in the future. Titanic in the future. I love that. Yeah. Um, we saw Titanic the, the musical. Titanic the musical in theaters. In theaters. Not so they've filmed. It's like the pro shot of yes. the Titanic musical. And it the was slime tutorial. The slime the tutorial. Slime tutorial. <laughs> it was beautifully shot too. It was gorgeous. But it was literally in like it was insane. Like it there were so <laughs> many words in that musical. I can't remember a single tune. But they were just like, I'm going on the ship. There were so many. I remember at one point a line was literally somebody just having a one throwaway line in a song being like monopoly is good for all the industries and oh like, yeah that what? was incredible that was incredible but let's paint the scene so yeah. it's because it was a really minor showing so blair myself and our producer rob we had to go saturday or a sunday oh it was sunday at, at 12 sunday 30 at 12. p.m no just new like a, a, a oh it's like a, a hard noon. noon a hard noon hard noon which is not our time <laughs> no that's morning. That's morning. That's 9 a.m. And like, and I only remembered it was happening because Blair texted being like, I'm I'm going to get there a little late. Yeah. And I was like, fuck. <laughs> well, I only remember too because I was like, literally, I got kind of drunk the night before. I wasn't kind like, of I drunk. Wasn't like, oh, yeah. I, I was literally like, drunk calling Carly. <laughs> but um, no, I was like kind of drunk and it was like 4.30 in the morning and I was listening to Animal Collective on my headphones. Just like vibe. I was like. Me, and you know, like we talked about this when you're like a little bit drunk oh. and music is the best it's ever sounded. Yes. You're, you're like, like, this is why music was invented. Yeah. You're like, music is the universal language. Yes. Listening to My Girls by Animal <laughs> Collective just on loop. If you yes. haven't listened to it, do yourself a favor. That was me on Halloween. What a song. In Embarrassingly, uh, just listening to Anti Hero by Taylor Swift over and over yeah. and over again. Hey, if it hits, from it Broadview hits. Station to Ossington Station, because there's a scene. I'm I am unapologetically just an absolute fan of the TV show You. Oh, I love you. I love it, and it's one of those things. Like I would love to write something like that that is so campy and fun, but every once in a while has like a really cool choice. And at the end of this most recent season, they have him like looking into a mirror and that song plays. Oh, And it's that's just awesome. fucking fabulous oh, as like a choice. So um, but you got drunk before, so that's why you realized Oh, that. and then in the middle of the night, like it was like 4.30 in the morning, I was like, do I have anything tomorrow? And I looked at it, it was just like <laughs> Titanic, Titanic the, the musical. musical noon at like Blore Varsity. I was like, oh, oh yikes. <laughs> <laughs> I better go to bed. Yeah. And so I went to bed, obviously woke up like discombobulated. Like, yeah. Who the fuck am I? That was like, I'm going to be late for Titanic and musical. And Carly was like, I forgot it was happening. But you sent that text at just a beautiful time of you gave me enough time to remember and get there on time. Okay. You're yeah, welcome. It was really beautiful. So we all showed up. Um, we got, of course you're getting movie theater snacks. Rob got popcorn and a beer. <laughs> which was so different vibes. <laughs> In the second song, I got a beer. <laughs> I, that, was a, that was a the, choice. Yeah. Rob, Rob, saw, like, Rob saw the opening number and was like, I'm going to need a beer. To be fair, the opening number was 25 oh, minutes long. I know. Like, and it was like, well, they're still going. If it's you're a fan going. of True Tanning the podcast, you'll know that we are fans of musical theater. Yes, we Even love musical that theater. that first act was rough. Oh, yeah. Like that, yeah. it's literally a 12-minute opening song. Yeah. Immediately, 
Rob leans over to me and goes, there is no irony in this. It's just all of them being like, on the Titanic, I'm getting my It's ticket. about what a nice boat it is. Yeah. Like the power of boats. But I, then it's also like they're talking about this boat, but you can't see the boat. They're just on stage. They're just yeah, like, sorry, first of imagine all, we're on the boat. No, they didn't just say that. They said a, a feat of human engineering, yet also poetry. <laughs> That was the lyric they repeated 900 times. A movable yeah. city, the feat of engineering and also poetry. poetry. That's that's so much of that's somehow the chorus almost. I can't even I can't even lie. I I do not remember like a single fucking song. I I don't no. remember a single tune. But I, I remember yes. I think like out of the three of us, I liked it the most. I uh, yeah. But I loved yes. being like Well, we both let's say it. Enough. We both cried. I cried. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> But the second half, the Rob second was just like, we, I hate this. <laughs> and Carly and I were like, yeah, awful. It's so stupid. <laughs> I don't know, I hate it. Um, it's, it falls into a real problem with, I think, a lot of Titanic media of just the, it's only interesting once the Titanic hits the iceberg. Yeah. But you have to set shit up before it. So the first yeah. act, obviously, if you're writing anything, you're going to write until, like, the, the act break is going to be when you hit the iceberg. Yeah. Obviously. Has to be. And it's just so boring because it's just people being like, here's my, here's our problems. Mm. And some of these problems, who cares? Well, Genuinely, who gives a fuck? There's this one woman who's just like, uh, she, I'm second class and I want to party with the first class so bad. And that's like her whole thing. And her husband's like, why? I run a hardware store. Why do you want to be first class? And they're class? just like, I and don't want to live in like Minnesota or whatever that, city they yeah, live in. Yeah, they Yeah. Can't remember. Yeah, it was, no, it was Minneapolis. Minneapolis. No, don't you remember? It's like, I'm going to Chicago. I'm going to Cincinnati. Oh. I'm going to Albuquerque. Yeah. Why? We don't know. They, they just pick like words a, on a map. I don't know. know. I'm going to be all, a seamstress in Albuquerque. Because well, they're all from like Ireland and they were all like, from Ireland. I hope that Albuquerque is like Dublin. <laughs> like that was <laughs> a fucking like, song. Girl, it's, it's not. not gonna be, it's it's not. Gonna be, they did not know what the cities were. They no. had absolutely no idea. Uh, no. No, they were unclear. But to be but fair, that's it was also realistic. That's realistic. Because my family when they came over on the boat from Ireland they were like hmm maybe Dorval Montreal <laughs> Quebec <laughs> like oh yeah like yeah. why yeah yeah you just pick a random place but um so the first act it's they just have to set stuff up yeah there's that couple there's another couple and it's basically the same fucking floor it's plot kind of, line they do have two of the exact same couple she's first class but she's is like she's from a high class and she's yeah, given she's up like her a lady. she's a lady and she's given up her lady status to be she's with married below her a, yeah she's married below her class to be with a middle class yeah. man and he's insecure about that yeah and there were three Irish women named Kate yes they were a lot of fun they were fun and the main Kate was so phenomenal good. she was she phenomenal had beautiful ginger hair and she just really had you know when you we, this is what I will say, and I think this is why we liked it a little bit more than Rob, because Rob really likes you're you're really into like writing and it and was it was like if you if I told you it was a Titanic musical, you could predict literally every <laughs> single thing. It's, yeah. it's it's written in your head already. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the there, performances was no, were good. Oh, there was no surprise. Yeah. No. And the writing was fine at best. Like well, it's not it, but the acting, the yeah. performances were really was great. So, good. so like the woman who played Kate and her whole thing is she's an Irish ro woman who's in third class. And she's and pregnant. She's pregnant, she's but, pregnant. But the father is married to someone else. So she's going to um, America for a new life. And she's, there's a handsome guy who's, a th sorry, Mitch is <laughs> licking her asshole. She's licking her ass, but also getting the hem of my pants at the <laughs> same time. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> um, and she falls in love with this other third class Irishman. And they get together, kind of. That's her whole story. But it, and you don't really care about it. But she's phenomenal, so you care. No, she's fantastic. Um, here's a couple of things that I think were good about mm. it. And good is general. <laughs> Besides the acting, which I thought was great. The acting was like great. even the guy who played Ismay, I thought was fucking fantastic. He was so because good because the writing for Ismay was like villain. Like yeah. they didn't give that character an ounce of nuance. No, which we've talked about in this podcast before. He just gets he catches stray bullets. Uh, really in every does. single piece of Titanic media where he was, there's no re record of him saying, let's go fast. Yeah. But everybody's latched onto that as his thing. Well, and it's, he's like, and we talked about this so many times, like he's so easy to give that persona yes. to. And like, it's just sort of like, who else are you going to really blame? And he had to get on the lifeboat so somebody yeah. on the lifeboat could, somebody could tell them what happened. But for sure that looked bad. Of for course. sure that and looked you, bad. And you know that it looks bad because all of the men in that fucking 
musical were like, I'm going down with the ship yeah. because I'm honorable. Because I'm honorable. So And he just got on a lifeboat. They didn't they didn't do anything about him being ordered to go on the lifeboat. No, no, he just he got even, on and looked a little like, oh. Well, at the end, they have all of the characters like in their trauma blankets in front of this long tapestry of all with the names of all the people that perished on the lifeboat. Beautiful they, scenography. Yes. And they all turn around and say a thing of being like, maybe this could have happened, blah, blah, blah. And he turns around and goes, Why shouldn't I have gotten a lifeboat? <laughs> That's his, that's all yeah. he says. It's just like, buddy, you could have said anything else. But like they, they did just, a really, they did a really fun thing in the musical too, where they made like the captain, mm -hmm. EJ Smith, uh, Bruce Ismay and Thomas Andrews, like a little trio. Yes, that they was like fun. They were like the trio, like the three main characters. And that was really and fun. And they had a fun song. I mean, you would think it would be fun. <laughs> Mus it wasn't. Musically, not fun. No. But a good idea. Like all, it's just the music itself was very, um, it was very predictable, I would say. Mm -hmm. And I don't know a lot about music, but you can just feel it. Yeah. Um, where they were all, when the Titanic was going down, blaming each other. Yeah. Where, you know, they were saying, well, you're the captain. But well, it wasn't you what designed your fault. It. I was given those beans. You were straight yeah. the and we make out four beans. And without those beans, there had been no sock. It was literally, I yeah. wish it was that. I wish I we wish just saw it into the woods. Into the woods. Um, oh, I'd love to. So they just give him, like, in that song, he, obviously the entire time, he's like, let's go faster. Let's go faster. We need mm. to blah, 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 which who cares? <laughs> and then... In that song, he blames everyone. He's just so evil the entire time. Gets no redemption. Yeah. No. Uh, like, Catching strays. No, like, no, there's nothing redeemable about him. But in the opening number and in the closing number, it's all of the people singing almost as if they are ghosts on the Titanic. But you don't yeah. really know that they're ghosts in the opening number. Mm -hmm. And he just walks through to center stage with this look of just horror <laughs> on his <laughs> face. And... Like as being like, it gives so much nuance to this character that yeah. like this actor did. It is not in the script, no, the but actor through him really doing well. it, you're like, oh, it's all an act. And he mm -hmm. is sitting with this horror for his entire life. Yeah, it's rough. And it was, it's amazing when somebody's choice like that can make something where there is nothing. It's, yeah. like, it's very much when you watch somebody who plays like the best friend in a rom-com and you're like, oh, these choices are the only thing giving this character yeah. anything. Absolutely. So he was phenomenal. But yeah, there was also a part, so they didn't do, um, the, so in the original we talked about on the podcast, the ship tilts 45 degrees. Yeah, they use hydraulics. And they use hydraulics and people are falling, people are getting and injured. And this, this is as soon as the, so all, the whole second act, is, the ship is, on is the slowly tilt, tipping, which, which is, is the stage, which is so funny. That's so fun. That's like, literally that, well, And that makes sense why the music is boring because yeah. you don't need good music if the stage yeah, is tipping. Yeah, if you're just like, that actor's gonna fall and die. But it, but it also you'd be so mad. It's not like in Wicked when they have a no-fly show, which if you don't oh. know, if you're not, if, if your brain isn't melted by musical theater like mine is, <laughs> sometimes the at the end of act one, Elphaba the witch sings Defying mm -hmm. Gravity and they strap her into this little podium thing and it raises and she's flying. And then she goes, ah. But sometimes the mechanics aren't working or there's some kind of issue. So they say it's a no fly show. That's so crazy. So what happens is she just goes to the front to she just goes to like the front of the, the lip of the stage mm. and she sings. And when she start when she hits like the final notes and she starts flying, the choreography changes. So everybody kind of like hits the ground. So it still visually looks like she's flying because oh. everybody else falls. That's cool. Um, but if you get a no tilt show for the Titanic. Oh, you're done. You're There's done. There's nothing to see. But the way they did it in the movie was they just had this like platform and the only person on it was Thomas Andrews. The architect. Right at the end, the architect, Thomas Andrews, the architect. And they just basically punch him off this platform. It was so <laughs> funny because it like tilts fully upwards and this guy's literally hanging on for and dear life. he's gotta be what, 60? Singing. Oh my God, this guy <laughs> is a senior I know, citizen. It's true. Hanging like, on for dear life because the oh, Titanic is <laughs> The breath control. Because, awesome. yeah, he's holding on for his he dear life. He really is. And I'm sure that there was something to catch him, but he I really was. I was looking and it it was, um, he, so it's the stage is tilting, but right before it tilts, there's a bit of straight, like a, a part of the stage that doesn't yeah. tilt. But still, feels like he but could still, go flying. That's the thing. I'm like, it, like, but like for sure he's holding on. Like his drop would be less than a foot. But, but like, he's, like he's, he, that could get you. That could get you at his advanced age. That could get you. He could get you. So yeah, that happened. But yeah. Oh, they had an amazing, which is when we openly wept. Um, the Strausses. Oh, <laughs> they had a song. Oh. So Isadora and Ida Strauss, the 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 founders of Macy's, King Princess, King Princess's great, great grandparents. Yeah. 
Um, they, cause they're like the old couple in the Titanic movie who spoon and they, and they, spoon they die and together because he together doesn't get on the lifeboat because he wants to wait till the younger men get on and she doesn't get on the lifeboat because he doesn't get on the lifeboat. So they yeah. die together. Just giving you context of this is somehow against all odds, the first episode you're listening to of this <laughs> <Yeah>. podcast. <laughs> but oh my God. So they, so that sad. was such a, and again, it's not like the, I couldn't tell you a single song from this musical. Yeah. I just remember it because they're like, okay, it's time for these two elderly actors to clock the fuck in. Oh my God. And they bring really down do. the house where they're in their massive quarters. The uh, like lady maids, Weeping because yeah. they're going down with the ship. They're they're dying. There's this like first class steward. Yes. It's just kind of around. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. His whole, yeah. And they end up singing this song, the two Strausses, where he's like putting on her necklace and they're getting dressed oh. in their finest. And it's, I think it's they're called I Love champagne. You Still. And oh. they just talk about how it's like, I love you more. It's very That's Edna, so you're timeless cute. to me from Hairspray of being like, Another I still- Another adorable song. Yes. I still- love, like, I love you as much as today as I do I did back then. Mm. And they also, because the song that I did think was good, although I'm sure it's taken from a class, a jazz standard of some mm. kind, they have this singer on the boat sing Autumn, his new hit. Oh, yes. But at the end, they're, they're all like, let's play Autumn. We love to dance to Autumn. <laughs> and then at the end, the Strausses like do a little di slow dance as they basically enter into the afterlife together to the song Autumn, like just the That's the how I want to go. Absolutely. Play me a little song, I do my little dance. I just dance in the death. Yes. When so I did acid, great. I was like, I'm going to walk into the lake and that's how I'll die. Like Virginia Woolf. <laughs> yeah. I think that, I think I'm going to Virginia Woolf myself eventually. I told you that that's how my um, great, great yeah. grandfather died. I know. And I, I've just been getting too many signals. Really? At this point, you know, but not yet. No. You got to wait until you, until there's a body of work. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. At mm -hmm. least. That I can leave behind. Exactly. Yeah. I, so I only, ten, instead of saying you're going to Virginia Woolf yourself, people say you're going to Blair McMillan yourself. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Man, I have such a mouthful. Blair McMillan. But it's a strong name. It's a strong, for and a 75-year-old Scotsman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and it, but it's also uh, phonetic. Is that the right word? Yeah. Phonetic? Like, it reads how it's pronounced, which oh, I think yeah. is very helpful. It is. People really fight that. Everyone says my name wrong, but I just don't really How do they them. say a lot of people say McMullen, which I just Weird. don't really, I just don't know where you're getting that you from. <laughs> it's That's, coming coming out of nowhere. It's coming out of nowhere. But Titanic the Musical, honestly, I'd say it's worth a watch if you're a nerd and you have three hours and it's a Sunday afternoon. If you love the Titanic and you have an edible on hand, oh. then you can. I don't, like, the music of it is not good. It's, and I, and yeah. I'm saying that as somebody who, like, I have, I really try not to, I'm trying to in my in my life now, not criticize things that I can't do, if that makes sense. Um, where it's yeah. like, if being like, that was a bad fucking performance and being like, yeah. I can't do that, yeah. so what am I talking about? But the music was very boring. Also what we talked about on the Titanic and pop culture episode where we talk about the Titanic musical, when the ship is going down, there used to be a like 40 page scene with overlapping dialogue. It's crazy. Which is insane. How do you even write that? Why would you do that? Because they have, they replaced it with a song where a mother is talking to her child about what's going to happen yeah. and saying like, we're going to see daddy tomorrow. Probably no. not. Um, and that's the song. Mm -hmm. Like that song, again, musically, Begging for a chorus. Yeah, like please. Begging for a but melody. It was, it was giving like but song was, times big on Broadway right now. But, Here's the thing, Sondheim, there's not like a catchy chorus. But there's a chorus. There is a chorus exists. Yeah. And also, even if there isn't a chorus, he gives you like an earwormy melody. Like something. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. No, there's a lot of like catchy stuff in Sondheim that people are just like, there is nothing catchy in Sondheim. It's like, but like, you know Sondheim songs and you don't even realize you know them. Exactly. Like that's the thing that's We crazy. talked about, I sent Blair the merrily we roll along so Broadway good. revival cast recording, God tier cast recording. It's mixed so well. Yeah, it's so the good. The acting choices are great. I love Merrily, which we I talked about on this podcast. It's surely. such a good show. I would yeah. love to be a Merrily. If anyone's casting Merrily we roll along, <laughs> let us both know, honestly. I know. I only want to be in a gender bent Merrily roll along so you and can play, play Charlie. Charlie, yeah. 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 I would learn piano. That's the only, that's the thing. I'm like, I feel like I would be a Broadway musical theater girl if growing up I was exposed to more fun roles like that for women. I know. I just used to thing. think like, and love this role. It's just not my hit. Like, 
Reno Sweeney and Anything Goes was like what my high school didn't. Like, yeah. I love Sutton Foster as Reno mm -hmm. Sweeney. I think she's a great cast. But I don't look at that and go, oh, that's me. I oh, could do that. No, it's actually like, it's so frustrating how few, like there there are roles for men in musical theater where like you barely have to be able to sing. Yeah. But like for women, it's like you have to be a triple threat and you have to be like hot and you have to do all this stuff. And it's like, where are the little character roles? Ex yeah, a little character role. Because the yeah. thing that's fun about Charlie and Marilyn Roll Along is how neurotic he is. Mm -hmm. So you just get to do like little jokes and be a foil for the main yeah. character. And I will say Sondheim is good at writing those roles for women. He does have more of those roles than other people. Definitely. Like Company has a bunch of them. And there's also Into the like, the I'm woods. not getting married today. I love that song. That's Part a great song. Right there, right there. I can sing all the three parts. Whoa. That was my party trick at one point. That's but then crazy. I couldn't overlap them. Because you're not, you can't throw I can't your be voice. Free, I can't throw my voice. I was yes. working on it at one um, point. Then it just got be, real annoying. Yeah, Titanic the Musical was very much... Um, it's really showing that Sondheim is big on Broadway. It's like we have Sondheim at yes. home. And we, we have Sondheim, Sondheim and, and it's the Titanic, Titanic the musical, the musical. Where it's none of the beautiful like musical orchestrations or clever lyrics, but it is a mouthful. Yes. It yeah, is a mouthful. It really is. But, but phenomenal acting. Phenomenal acting. And also, also importantly, we also saw this week a ballad of song versus today. Yes, for our girl Rachel Zegler. For our girl Rachel Zegler. We're wearing our, We're wearing of course, our Get our Rachel Zegler on Truth Tanic 2024. I need to wash mine at this point. I have to, I wash mine every week because nothing, so smart. Uh, like nothing makes me so sweaty like recording this podcast. I get like adrenaline sweats. Really? Yes. Wow. I loved it. I loved the movie. I thought it was a That's lot of awesome. fun. I, I thought it was a lot of fun too. Yeah, I don't like. It's it made not, me want to watch Catching Fire again though. So I don't know uh, what that says about it. So yeah, but, but Catching, Catching Fire. Fire is phenomenal. It is just such a perfect movie. Yes. Yeah, Rachel Claflin. Zegler was amazing. She was great. She has such a good voice. She has an amazing as she sang live in yes. it all. I was like, girl, go get him. Yeah, it was a big movie week for the Truth Tannic gang. That one She be, also, can I just say, wore heels in the arena. I know, which is a act that's actually like to that arena. She was wearing a little, a little dainty Etsy corset. Yeah, an Etsy corset a of a tiered skirt, chiffon skirt and, and little baby booty kitten heels. Little BB kitten heels. I love that. I do think, I mean, Suzanne Collins, she should be very proud of what she's done. She really has. In that she can, she is a phenomenal like YA writer. She, it's not yeah. the same. It's so rare to do a prequel or like a, I want to call it a reboot because even though it is a prequel, it's very obviously it's like, like a it's like a reboot. Yeah. Um, it's so hard to do that and not do the same exact fucking story. Mm -hmm. And this story is very different. Yeah. Like character wise, having a girl that loves fashion and the character that Hunter Schaefer plays also loves fashion. Yes. Like very feminine women who are still like exhibiting strength. I really appreciated that. Yes. I also loved the imagery, because I'm gonna do, I think, a YouTube video on this. It'll be out by now, so it doesn't matter. Um, I loved the part where they have the hanging tree, right? And they have the jabber jays, which are birds in the hanging tree that can like it just repeat. They're like they yeah. like they're like how parrots repeat what you say, but yeah. they're they're birds. tracking devices, yes. but birds. Um, so when somebody gets hung, their last words get like amplified over and over and mm -hmm. over again. And I was like, if I was Susan Collins and I wrote that, I'd be like, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> that's, yeah, enough of, that's enough writing for me today. Like it's just that's incredible. She's a very she cares a lot, which I think is what makes it good. Yeah. It's it she doesn't talk yeah. down to an audience, which is amazing. It's not about um being overly simplistic or going, well, it's for teenagers, so who cares? Like mm. the language itself is simplistic in the book. Yeah. But the actual things are are very Interesting. Like yeah, she obviously complex. like wanted to do something different, which I yeah. really appreciated. Acting again, phenomenal. Oh, the acting was so good. And uh, there were like also like things that I really thought like, and I thought this reading the book too, but like it really just shows you like how quickly you can descend into like kind of like a like dystopian madness. Yes. Which is like frightening, but it is really cool, especially it, yes. YA. Definitely. Like, because I feel like when I was a teenager, that was when I was most easily radicalized. Of course, you that's, know. I mean, that's the basis of like incel movements. It's like, yeah, you, you get them when they're 16 and, they're and then angry. when they're 21, they're murderous. When you're like, yeah, when you're like 16, you're just full of rage. Mm -hmm. You don't know why. Yeah. And it's really just like the first thing that kind of enrages you is sort of like, it's really important because if the first thing you're enraged at is that women aren't sleeping with you, it's then bad. it's going to be bad. Or if the first thing you're enraged at is, is like, you know, like you're mad at people of other things than you. 
then it's going to be bad. Like, yeah, I just got lucky that I was on Tumblr. I know, I really So I just became Tumblr. like an old crone stalking the halls of my high school and stopping every time anybody said gay. I literally- Derogatorily and was like, you actually can't say that. I know, I remember being like 12 years old and seeing an underfunded community center and being like, Damn. okay, I just made a decision. <laughs> Okay, this is going to be my whole thing. Because I was just sort of like, wait, so people are poor, and then we charge them more to be poor, and then they have to stay poor. What's not clicking? Then I was like, I'm a socialist. I never changed my views. Literally last night, two things on that. Literally last night we were watching, I've been watching The West Wing, phenomenal. You should watch it. I think you'd really like it. I should, I should. Um, And there's this whole thing going on where right now in like season five, Aaron Sorkin has left. We're in the trenches. (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) And the whole thing of this season is that there's like really intense Republicans Mm. fighting against the the House is Republican, but the president is Democratic. So there's that big fight. It's important to note that this was in like the 90s and 2000s. So it's before Republicans were like literally (laughs) the most. They were evil, but they weren't like actually Unwell. Well, there was still, yeah, exactly. There's such a difference between like, I disagree with Republicans and like Republicans right now <laughs> no, are exactly. trying to kill us. That's what like Mitt Romney said in his book. I haven't read his book. I just read somebody was talking about it online where he, because he hates the Republican Party now because oh, it's yeah. awful of people who either are lying about like Trump talking points uh, just mm-hmm. so they can further their political career or people who are legitimately insane. Well, that's the thing. If you actually read like Republican theory Mm -hmm. or like just sort of like, here's what like in theory the Republican Party stands for. It's like, oh yeah, like I 100% could see how someone thinks this way. Yeah, I don't agree, but I don't agree, but it it makes sense. It's It's not, it's not like what's happening now. Yeah, like Republicans going around and being like, people need to die. Yeah. Because because it's like, no, what no. are you talking about? No. So yeah, like, Wait, Mitt I thought Rom- you just like capital. <laughs> <laughs> like, what Mitt is Romney this? is like, it's way easier to work with the people who are legitimately insane. Like there's a guy mm-hmm. in the Congress who like just thinks that like the Ku Klux Klan should like run the government. And he's like, he's insane. But I'm like, let's work on the agriculture bills together. Like I can get you on this. As opposed to like the like liars, you know, like, yeah. like the people who are legitimately like cowards and liars who are, you know, it's just yeah. really interesting. So the whole thing is like Democrats versus Republicans in the West Wing. And I had like a thing last night where I was like, but the government is supposed to work for the people. The purpose of government is mm-hmm. to fund programs so that we, that the that society works. So why would you try and defund government things? Mm-hmm. And it's like, yeah, babe, that's the basis. <laughs> that's, that's really the whole thing. Yeah. What you're describing uh, yeah. is socialism. Yeah, but right. I think it's when you're in an environment like in Canada, where we just have, it's just societally more acceptable to fund those things. Yeah. It's a lot more, you can think that way a lot easier. Mm-hmm. Where you're not, if you have universal health care, it's not a massive like thought for it to happen. It exists. Yeah. It's not like a big jump. Yeah. Yeah. It's the Overton window of it all. Exactly. Love that. But yeah, I, I think when you're a child and you realize like, you either realize inequality or you become radicalized the other way. Yeah. I saw a YouTuber. Um, she it's a like she's a very obviously wealthy YouTuber, and I was watching a vlog of hers, and she she was like, "I'm going to like an like an anthropology like f- lunch event or whatever. Oh my god! And we have to bring canned goods because it's like a fundraiser. And she brought a single can of black beans. <laughs> bring a couple what? cans, girl. <laughs> Girl, bring Girl, a couple. Come You're, on. Bring a bean chili. No, what I'm Don't saying, be like, weird. bring nine cans. Yeah, like, bring I, some tuna. I bring a, feel bring like a spam. What's a, wrong with exactly, you? Like, especially this time of year, just because the messaging is ev- everywhere, which I think is good. Mm-hmm. I feel it so presently of like, you know, oh, like, let's do, like, we need people to have food, yeah. all these things. So whenever I go to the grocery store now, I'm just like, I've got to buy seven cans and put it in the box. <laughs> i got to bring cans. And I'm not like cans. vlogging me putting my single can in the anthropology oh, bag crazy. so I can have my free dinner and my free dress. That's so weird. Oh, it's it's dystopian. dystopian. Anyway, dystopia aside, I have a couple of Titanic questions Let's for you. talk about the Titanic. Let's and, talk about and, the and Titanic. Just finish. Because something I've been thinking about. Okay, I want to say, what was the most surprising thing you learned? Okay. Through the podcast. This is something that I think I, it really led to my understanding of why this happened. Yes. And that's the lifeboat of it all. Yes. I, Real. I found that to really be 
interesting because, you know, now, obviously, uh, the basically the motto of this podcast, the Titanic hadn't happened yet when the Titanic <laughs> was happening. It happened yet. You're just like, why was there not enough lifeboats? But understanding that boats were supposed to bob there. Yeah. And then the lifeboats were used as shuttles to take you to a ship that was working mm -hmm. makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I also think all the time, just about it's human instinct in the same way people are like, I don't want to get vaccinated. Mm hmm of like people are begging these rich people to get in the boats and everyone's like, I'm going to wait here. Yeah. It's cold I'm out hang there. Out here. In school, I are in here. I have and all I'm like, my that stuff. Is, that's human instinct no. to its core. Just being like, no, I don't want to live. I'm going to be uncomfy out there. That's like Fucking that's, Mary that's, Brown loading everything up, being like, I've seen this. That's giving or like Molly the energy. Brown. That's giving the energy of like, you know, when your fire alarm goes off in the middle of the night. Yeah, and you're like, and you're sort of like, oh, wait until I smell smoke. Yeah, is this I, real? I'm just, there's no way there's How a fire. Real is this? <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, I, I agree. Another thing that I found really surprising. Because to be fair, I came up with like a lot you of stuff. You knew a lot of I stuff. I knew a lot yeah. of stuff. But one of the craziest things was really like the most like actively shocked I was was researching like the finding of the Titanic wreck. Because mm -hmm. that was such a can of worms that I genuinely was not expecting. Yeah, that's really cool. Especially because I think like around the time that we were kids, the narrative of the, of the Titanic was very much like they were explorers finding this great thing. Yeah. And then we found it. Not just it. capitalism. Yeah. And, and it's like realizing like, oh, this thing was like so, like they've been trying to find it for so long. And then when the only reason they got money to fund it was because they were looking for lost nuclear submarines. Love it. And then once they did find it, immediately it just became this like cash cow and like I people know. diving and bringing stuff up about it. And how just kind of like actually disturbing it is, like spending so much time just reading yeah. about like the humanity of Titanic. And it's even at the end of like the James Cameron film when the guy is just like, Oh, like, a, like I'm, I learned the real thing about the Titanic is like, isn't salvaging goods. It's like, you know, the people who died on it, which like when you watch it, you're like, yeah, obviously, bitch. Yes. But like realizing, oh, that for sure is what was happening. People are well, going I mean, down the Titanic it, it, and trying to I, find jewelry. Meanwhile, they're, <laughs> they're like disturbing someone's grave. Totally. And I think even in terms of like the context of this podcast, like, First episode, I'm like, I don't care if someone in a monocle dies or whatever. And then you <laughs> and learn like, so much about it. And the like, strong. But she stayed with him. <laughs> you know, it once yeah. you learn things deeper, especially and yeah. not to be like, not to be literally geriatric and be like, mm, TikTok <laughs> is bad for learning. Like TikTok, TikTok, TikTok. Um but so much of how we learn about things now is so surface level. Yeah. That when you really like engage and learn a lot about something it humanizes yeah it really does it, it i will never think of the titanic as like a funny kind of touch point anymore <laughs> i think of it as like you an event it. i'm yeah. not gonna set a bunch of improv scenes yeah, in the titanic say, anymore oh, does this mean that the culminating events of our improv sets no longer happen at the well, titanic? now i feel like if i did that and somebody was like and my name's harold jingles i'd be like no it's not no it's not. he wasn't on the titanic he was not on the passenger he wasn't on the list he was on the list yeah. someone else no he wasn't sorry what class was he in it's like when we're playing you're playing like make-believe <laughs> yeah i'm like no he wasn't no he wasn't you can be bruce ismay yeah you can you can be a real person or nothing or nothing at all yeah it, it really does add a add a crazy level to it and you can really put things together you know yeah. which has been another cool things of being because even for me I feel like especially because like when you learn of stuff when like you're a little kid you kind of just learn facts yeah but, like, you don't put it into like critical thought uh, yeah, yeah and so putting things into like a context like knowing more about the time and stuff it's sort of like this was crazy <laughs> like, definitely this nuts even not not to bring up the iconic Titanic musical again, but they have a period <laughs> where like the lights go out. Everyone's like, I don't want to put my life jackets on or whatever. And then the lights go out and they all freak out. Yeah. And when we learn that like when the like the lights just go out, it's like, what? Yeah. Like That's you're done. crazy. Yeah. Can I ask a question uh, slash talk about like a potentially shocking thing that was in the musical? Of course. That I don't think has come up. So they say that the lower classes were like literally locked mm -hmm. downstairs and then nobody went and unlocked it at any point. Was that in, true? In life, surely people unlocked it, but I think the musical was uh, poorly written. <laughs> oh, okay, really? <laughs> well, because that's a big thing. Have you, you you haven't seen the movie. Uh, I, I haven't seen the movie in a while. I've seen the movie. Because in the movie, that was real. Like, they would lock the the lower classes downstairs mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and people got shot because of it because they were trying to get out. Yeah. Uh. And I don't know if they unlocked it or people found ways out, but people from third class got to the the top 
Yeah, I mean, I think there's also an issue of like people, there's lots of people and they show it in the movie where there's a man who's has like a English dictionary and he's trying to just like, he's trying to figure out what a sign means Mm -hmm. while the ship is sinking. If you don't speak English, you're like, what's happening? Yeah. I was like, you don't know. I think that there was like probably, I remember I looked this up. I don't know if necessarily they were like really like trying to lock the lower classes downstairs or if it was less of sort of like an like an information type thing. Like they weren't necessarily like telling them what was going on. And they're like, mm, we felt the bump. Yeah. We heard the scrape, babes. The and BBC also- the BBC says that uh, the British inquiry report noted that the Titanic was in compliance uh, with American immigration laws and for and that allegations that third class passengers were locked below decks were false. Well, this is the thing also because I think something we kind of forget, and I'm for sure guilty of it, is like this is a massive ship and third class were low, low on the decks. So it's like, whereas like first class, you kind of just stepped out onto the promenade and you were like at the lifeboats. Yeah. For third class, you had to go up decks and decks and decks. Plus you've got like way more people. Plus you've got, you know, the staff aren't as keen to tell you like, hey, get up. You got to get on a lifeboat. Kind yeah, of thing. that's wild. But it's like j- the same that uh, the musical is kind of like anti-Isme propaganda. Mm-hmm. There's, a, yes. there's a scene where like the captain is informed that people are trapped below decks. And we've already seen like some of them are like, I think I know a way out. So let's go this way. And then the captain's like, that sucks. And then he just walks <laughs> away. Basically. And somebody's like, are you playing God? And he's like, I don't know. And he just kind of, yeah. yeah cause he's like, it's my ship. And you're yeah. like, that's not an answer. I forgot about that. That the captain yeah. is just like, okay. Well, kind of what do you talk Ta- Like Thomas point? Andrews is the only person who escapes this basically on no, skate. he really does. Where he feels bad because he realizes if he, I, and who's to say if this is real, but there's a moment where he has his kind of I want song where he mm. realizes with the blueprints, because as an architect, you're bringing the blueprints around everywhere you go. Yeah, <laughs> you have to. That's just That's an architect kind of your thing. Prop. <laughs> he realized if he raised the bulkheads that the Titanic wouldn't sink yeah, as fast. Who knows if that's real? But that is not the same thing as Bruce Ismay being truly an evil villain. Yeah, exactly. And the captain being like, lock like him down. Well, and the captain too, I think was just sort of like, well, fuck, you know, I'm dead. I think that's the the other thing. And they did mention that in the musical too, like if they had hit the iceberg straight on. That was cool. I thought that that was, that that was nice. Cause that's why the first mate killed himself is cause he realized so that if he uh, didn't turn the boat and hit mm-hmm. it for, people would have died. But, but how would you have known, you know? It's all like, hindsight. It's all hindsight. Also, it's and for also, sure like, the captain's fault. It's, yeah. Like not to be that person, but like, don't ignore the ice warning. That's the thing. Like it was the it was the ice if warning. If we're gonna ascribe oh, no. fault, and I know this is the end of the episode, so we should say whose fault it is. Yeah. It's like nobody's fault. It's a it's a you know perfect storm of tragedies. It really was. But but if you had to say who it was, whoever is ignoring all of these ice warnings, that's the problem. Yeah, for sure. I think that probably everybody else was stopped. Going back to conspiracy theories, I do think that like they should have just realized they were in an ice field. A hundred percent. Which is like, it's crazy to think that you would just be like, no, we're probably not. We're just going to keep trucking through. It's like, you're in a nice field. Yeah. What's wrong with you? Stop the boat. Everybody yeah. else has stopped. Other boats are giving you warnings saying, hey, by the way, we're stopped for the night because there's ice everywhere. And you go, not me. Yeah. No, we're I'm not like other going. boats. We're going to keep going. Yeah. Yeah. Another Titanic question. What do you think like, the, like is your biggest takeaway? Good question. From the Titanic. And it can be anything. Like, okay, do you have yours? Okay, I was thinking there is, like, a pre and post Titanic in, like, modern times. Mm -hmm. Because I do think that, like, and, like, part of this is coincidence, but, like, you have the Titanic, which is just, like, emblematic of this, like, really kind of gilded, rich industrial age. Yes. And then the Titanic sinks. And then you have World War I, World War II. Life is bad. You know what I mean? And then it's like, it's- The stock market crashes. Yeah, stock market crashes. You know what I mean? Like, it really is kind of like, you can really look at it as like a metaphor of like, this is what the, like the industrial revolution kind of culminated in. Definitely. Of like this, this grand It's man's age. hubris. It's man's hubris. Also to think about, I feel like we talk about the Titanic a lot, like kind of like it was a cruise ship. There's a lot of people immigrating to a new country. Which is very sad. Which is something that like is crazy to think of, especially because like we just don't really immigrate via ship very much anymore. Yeah. But it it really was like that was the big point of the ship was to bring mail and to bring people to their new homes, which is crazy. Like it's really like it's like, oh, and then that kind of like 
yeah, you're you're kind of done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think a big takeaway of mine from the whole concept of the Titanic is just like it, it at every point, every person's opinion matters in stopping mm-hmm. a massive tragedy. It's like really representative of human hubris because they were given so many chances yes to stop and listen and, they and you never think it's going to be you mm-hmm. so you just go let's keep going yeah let's keep going mm-hmm. forever and the mummy's curse and the mummy's curse mainly the mummy though. it does actually at first i was like oh mummy's curse and i'm like oh fuck were there mummies on the titanic <laughs> you know what i mean like i, I literally was like lying in bed the other day i was like tiny mummies man, little mummies but still it's just sort of like, man, like no one thought maybe j- to just leave those alone. It feels like literally though in the last 10 years were the first time anybody had the thought of don't take other cultures stuff. Yeah. Like Molly Brown, lesbian icon. Lesbian icon. But made a mistake. Like th- she's, where did she get them from? Where did you, you got Why that mummy from a, a place you should not have gotten it from. But yes. Like what is your deal? Season three is going to be the uncovering of King Tut's. Of King Tut's tomb. Yeah. Because Bish. you were talking about how like everybody died because of it. Literally everyone died. Just bad karma. Why I, the fuck would you bring a mummy on board? I do little wish of the society we believed in magic just a little bit more because sometimes people do things that are just like straight up like you, you're going to have bad karma for the rest of your life if you do that. Yeah, there's stuff that's so bad. It's so it's bad. Not Don't like do you're, that. It's not like you're going to get bad karma from cutting someone off on the highway. It's yeah. like you're disturbing a, a grave, a tomb. What's wrong with you? And you're like, mm, I think I might put a little bit of this behind glass. And it's like, don't, 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 don't. Yeah, I wish we had like a, just like a little bit more of like. It'll be interesting in to see how that goes with museums because you've really seen no. the tides turn a bit with zoos, yes, and aquariums. Like I did, and hope like I know that be- people don't care about animals enough that this would cancel me, but it should <laughs> cancel me. Where mm. I remember one time for my like eighth birthday, my mom bought me like a chance to like be with the dolphins at the National Aquarium in Baltimore. Oh my God. Where it's like the dolphins not getting paid, get marched <laughs> out from their little tanks and they have to like hang out with the pe- with like eight people who are like s- trying to teach them tricks. It's like be like, be a dolphin trainer for oh my a God. day. These poor dolphins. Oh, I know they don't do the show so anymore, which is good because it used to good. be every day at three and six or whatever. It'd be like, oh my God. okay, dolphins get out here and do a show. And, do and the dolphins tri- are like, I why am I? I'm smarter than you guys, and I am trapped. Yeah, I have a big brain. Yeah, I have, I have a big my brain. My brain is too big. That's crazy. So that's why a lot of like people ethically don't really agree with zoos anymore. Mm-hmm. So it'll be interesting to see if that extends more so to like museums. I know. I do wonder that too because I love museums. Yeah. But I do think that there's kind of like uh, some museums are cool, and then other museums are sort of like, this is suspicious. Like I, I like that, I love the yeah. war museum. I uh, love. You know what I mean? Like the canoe museum. I've never been to the canoe museum. It's a bunch of canoes. I wonder if <laughs> like there canoes. is a way to do it. I mean, obviously transporting artifacts is tough. Mm-hmm. But I think the reason that like art museums are fine is because those exhibits travel. So yes. it's like the yeah. Keith Haring exhibit is at the AGO right now. Mm-hmm. Because it's going to different places. So it's like sharing the wealth of this knowledge. If you're yeah. not going to return it to the people. Mm-hmm. And like, to be fair, I don't know what's going on with like, it, how I don't know the politics of cultures wanting their artifacts returned to them. Because I feel also like if you're like, hey, ancient Egypt, I guess it's just Egypt now. <laughs> hey, Egypt, here's ancient, all your, here's, here's all your stuff back. They'd be like, give me a second. Yeah. I gotta like, I know. I, I do think that there's varying degrees of it because like at some points it's sort of like a lot of it's kind of past but we had a bunch of like at my work without doxing where i work at my work we had a bunch of artifacts um <laughs> your work should not have <laughs> artifacts blair i've been there that <laughs> is crazy somebody's gonna artifacts. spill beer on them <laughs> <laughs> yeah so we had a bunch of artifacts and one of the things we did was like we started returning them because exactly it- we were like we're gonna spill beer on these artifacts um nothing like obviously like super valuable but it but was it's like, like why is this here yeah, it was sort of like, we should not it's be- It's like my favorite thing these. in the entire world that in the condo building that Second City is and they just have a Banksy cut out of a wall oh, behind glass. Don't it's kill me. literally don't evil. Don't fucking kill it's me. So, that's it's so It's so evil. abhorrent. But yeah, I think that's my main takeaway from the Titanic. It's like, ev- yeah. like just li- take a moment. 
And if the girls were on the Titanic, it'd be different. If the girls were on the Titanic, I want the girls on the Titanic. Let's do it okay. again. Here's another question. Okay, let's do this the last question. Let's do the last up. question. Um, what do you think the future holds for the Titanic? I honestly feel like it's never going to not be relevant. Yeah. It just feels like, obviously we're reaching a Titanic renaissance now, probably because of the submersible. But like, the uh, we are, it's just massive, you know? Yeah. Like, and I think the fact that a really good movie is yes. based on it, like it's just going to keep it continually and continually relevant. I do agree. I also think that there is still more media that is yet to be pulled from the Titanic. Definitely. I was reading, it was either on TikTok or Reddit or somewhere, and I wish I had saved it so I could credit this person, but someone was saying that an amazing movie would be the events of the night of the Titanic sinking, but what was happening on the Carpathia. Oh, which is the like yeah. the or the Carpathia, um, the ship that saved the survivors of the Titanic. Yeah, because apparently they were like the real unsung heroes, definitely of the whole thing. They're like go 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 go! And someone was like, "This would be an amazing movie," and I was like, "For sure, I could see that happening. Definitely, that would be an incredible film." Yeah, there's just so much there. Mm -hmm. It's just we are so interested in it as a culture because of the tragedy of it and all yeah. these things. I just think it's going to continue to be relevant in some way or another. I agree. I think something will come in maybe when we're like in our 50s or something that keep that like yeah makes it more relevant because when you think of stuff, I don't know. There's so many random waves. there's so many random movies that I know like were like quotes from that are from like the 50s or whatever. It's yeah. like so if the movie is good, it will kind of be like relevant forever mm -hmm. or for very, very long periods of time. And then people yeah. are going to want to, I think it's going to have to be some kind of media like that Carpathia one. Mm -hmm. Because I think right now, even though James Cameron didn't invent the Titanic, it's still to me very, if somebody it's was like, his. we're making a Titanic movie, I'd be like, mm, we I have know. one. Wait till at least James Cameron dies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Or it has to be such a different story. Like about, yes, like because so I really different. do want even obviously the story of Jack and Rose is quite sad, but I would love more focus on the people who are working on the Titanic. Yeah, and that just would like, be cool. like like a downtown Abbey and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Like yeah. just like the people who are working and how they can try and yeah. escape. I just think that that's so important. And I I was also thinking because in the Titanic musical they have this guy who's working in the coal room who wants to get home to his uh, fiance. Oh yeah, there's this awesome scene where they're like shoveling coal, but it's not real coal. They're, and they're just doing like it. a yeah, doing and then it. one guy just falls. Yes, like he shovels and they like oh, he's collapses. like I'm fainting. He's like oh, look at the coal. It's like okay, but I was thinking like there are so rarely stories like that about women. Yeah, like having just like here's a working class woman, just yeah. just going to a better life, like not steeped in the tragedy of like uh, pregnancy or marriage or anything. It's yeah. just being like. Here's I'm a, just a gal. I'm doing work. Like, I would love to have, like, a ladies made Titanic story, yes. you know? That would be very cool, It'd just too. be interesting, and I'd love to see something like that. Yeah. And I think that that's different enough, because it's kind of like, I mean, Star Trek has that below decks story, which is just about, like, mm. it's about, like, the random kind of, like, first rate, like, private workers kind yeah. of thing. And I think that that would be an interesting Titanic story as well. I think you have to make it different than... The James Cameron one. Yeah. Because even though it's like a universal story of kind of Romeo and Juliet-ish, yeah. um, it still feels too present to yes. really do something different. And it just felt like, I know everyone's like, oh, it's old now. It's like, but it's still so new in the scheme of things. Yeah, in the scheme of human you know? existence. Yeah, the scheme of human existence is still a pretty recent movie, especially for a movie of that scale. Definitely. And that's like, a movie that's going to get shared and shared again. Like, yeah. You like know, mothers like, are going to share it yeah. with daughters and that kind of thing. Exactly. I do think, like, too, I wonder, because of the submersible, which mm -hmm. was too bad. So earlier this year. Bold stance. There, <laughs> there was a, a too bad situation of a submersible going down the Titanic and imploding. We all know it And well. everyone died. It was too bad. And they all, you know, it was too bad. Where are you going with this? We, so <laughs> we literally point blank before we recorded the episode said we weren't going to talk about I'm the submersible. I'm not talking about the submersible, but I do think that that has maybe tainted the tourist. Yes. Um, and a, fair appeal enough. Of going I don't to the think Titanic. we need to do that. No, no one, no one really needs to go if you're not there for like scientific or I think we could maybe get some kind of ghost thing because the whole thing of the Titanic claiming victims years yeah, and years. Yeah, the ghost. It, there could be, it could feel more haunted and more unfinished business type For sure, curse. there's so many ghosts. That could there. be a really cool 
tilt of it in some yes, way. I, do I like would that. love an actually good Titanic book, not nonfiction, but give me James Cameron's yeah, Titanic. Give me a good story. And I don't Titanic. want it to be a Harlequin romance, even though no, like no hate on that. But I yeah. want it to be like an all the light we cannot see. Yeah. Pulitzer nominated, but it's the Titanic. I think that could be that really would, cool. That I'm could, not going to write be, it. That could be your lady's maid story too. Yeah, but I'm not going to write you know, it. You should. Uh, I only write things that exist so in the present. <laughs> I don't want to do an iota of research. It's okay. Wait until, wait, wait until I'll you're be like, older. Yeah, Go when through I'm your like, Saturn return. No, I think that's very true. I Saturn think return you, and then When you talk book. to a lot of like older women authors, they really spend like when, and by older, I don't mean like crazy old, but like, you know, jo Joyce Carol Oates, who I think mm. is in her seventies maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which is pretty old actually now that I think about it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you know, young, like a young 70. Like a young 70. Like a sprightly, a sprightly like, a, like a spin cloth 70. Strong 70. Like a strong she, yes. 70. Um, a lot of them are really interested in like writing these big ambitious novels because they're mm -hmm. like, well, I've written, you know, a lot yeah. of other fun, like not fun, but you know, it's more like easy seat of the pants flying. I'm like, here's a story that I need to tell in my soul. Yeah. And it's just coming out free flowing as opposed yeah. to being like, no, I think I'm going to spend 15 years dedicated to the research and creation of this historical yeah. novel. I'm going to write Lonesome Dove. Exactly. So uh, I guess that was Larry. But um, no, I do think that there's, uh, I do think that also just like something happens to your brain between 20 and 30. Yes. That makes you just, your interests go wildly everywhere. Yes. So I think you could write it. But Definitely. maybe when you're 30, Yeah, 40, once I'm once I'm feeling that. I'm going to put my money on your 40 years old, you write your Titanic ladies. Okay, novel. let's check in at yeah, that point. I'll check we'll in. check in on check that in point. With you. I do agree. Every once in a while, like we have a couple of friends who are a little younger. And whenever they say something, I'm like, yeah, you're 21. Life is yeah, hell. Yeah, like life of course is you hell. Think that Like way. life is hell. No, life sucks for you. I can't, like, I can't help you Yeah, about you just it. you just have to go through this, yeah, this stage it, of hell, But then you get older and it does get better. Yeah, and then you're fine. Yeah. You're fine and it's like, Life gets better when you're older. That's why I was thinking the other day, I was just sort of like, if I could make like one PSA and just be annoying on the internet, say just like, do not kill yourself in high school. Oh my God. Like, do not do just do not. not kill yourself in high school. Yes. And if you're in high school and you're considering it. Don't. I swear to even if your life doesn't get better, your brain gets better at dealing with no, it. No, and that's so true. And just the autonomy that you gain, the difference between being 17 and 19 and 20 and 21 is it's, astronomical. It's literally crazy. So do not kill yourself when you were 16, 17 years old. Well, it's it's exactly what we were saying. It's like, I'm like, yeah, like being in high school is awful. It's awful. Like there's no... Your life is just not, when you're a teenager, no. it's not awesome. And when and you have no autonomy, are, you can't make your no, own decisions. Most exactly. Of the time. And it is your brain. Like, that's a really yeah. big thing. Like, it is crazy to me as an adult. When I was in high school, I wanted to be dead so oh, much. All the time, every, every day. day. And now as an adult, I'm like, but I'm not going to like do it. Yeah. Like, if I have yeah. a bad thought, I have the perspective and understanding, even at 24, which, like, mm -hmm. is not, like, there's way more life to do. Yeah. To be like, oh, this is a passing feeling, yeah. and my reality is not connected to this feeling unless I allow it to be. Yeah. In high school, it is, because life is a nightmare. You go yeah. to school one day, and all of your friends don't like you anymore, and there's and you nothing just, you, you can never do about get an explanation You just why. roll with the punches. Or someone says something bad about you, and you just have to live with it. Or, you know, like, your parents make terrible decisions. And on top and of that, your brain your is not cooked. Your brain is not cooked. Also, your impulsivity. You're not ready. That's, like, a big statistic. Yeah. And it's for true of, like, committing, committing violence against others and yourself is like once if you can get to like 18 19 mm -hmm. like self harm rates for women drop in, yeah. uh, astronomically because you're just like because yeah. your impulse control gets better yeah it's it literally is like and i wish this is going to be the theme yeah, like, of the the truth tanic podcast do not, do not kill, kill yourself in high, high school. school don't do it and it's truly really like, I wish someone had told me, like, even if your life doesn't get like categorically better year by year by year, every year you will get better at dealing with it and therefore your life will get better. Yeah, I really wish somebody had said to me, like, your life will be better. Like, yeah. just because your brain is better. Because I think I had a lot of anxiety as well in high school because I didn't have any adults in my life that I could identify having a life that I would want to have. Yes, yeah, um, I get that. And not even like what I wanted, the life I wanted to have in high school was not like, it's 
it's not the life I should be living and I don't want that life. <laughs> you want it to be Tina Fey. Exactly. And that's, that's there was no yes, Tina Fey. Exactly. But even so, it's like there was no adult that I could look to in my life that I felt cool is a bad word, but I wanted to see somebody who was unencumbered by like expectation. And yeah. I just didn't have that. I get that. And I do feel like the benefit that I've had on other adults in my life is they've seen that. Like my parents have gotten way more cool and way more free mm -hmm. because they've been like, well, she's vibing. So yeah. let's join. So I <laughs> wish somebody out. had said to me like, just because you don't see it does not mean it doesn't exist and does not mean it's not going to happen. Yes. Because even like you saying like your life is not going to get better. It's like it, like you said, it just does. It just your does. brain is better. There's no way it's not better. Yeah. Your brain is better. You have more control. It's just like, just don't, just don't kill yourself in high school. It's not worth it. Like you it's will be happy. It. You'll, you'll be fine. You, you will literally be fine and you'll get better at dealing with things. And like truly... I have had like, you know, so many, obviously like there are years where like things get better and then things get worse, mm -hmm. but like, you're kind of just like, you know what I, like you just kind of roll with it you at some point. You just know that it's not as serious because you've dealt yeah. with it before and, and therefore yeah. you know it ends. And then like, as you get older too, like every year becomes like a smaller percentage of your life. Yeah. So it's like when you're 16 and you have a bad year, one sixteenth of your life is, has been horrible. And then double that down even more is that like, you probably can't really remember the first eight years of your life. Yeah. So it's an eighth of your life has been a fucking living hell. Yeah. Of course you want to die. But then when you reach 20, that's only a 10th of your life, which is already a lot easier to deal with. Yeah. Also, and the, plus you've uh, forgotten about it. The autonomy it. is massive. The autonomy like, is You can just be like, I'm going decisions. to fix my life. Yeah, exactly. You can just, if you are in a situation where nobody, you don't like anybody around you, you can leave that situation and start yeah. new. If you're 15 and you're in high school, you're like, well, I my parents live here, so like, yeah. I can't go to this a different where, school. This is where we've chosen to be. Yeah. So that's, I feel like we should just okay. end on the note of don't kill yourself in don't high school. Don't kill yourself in high school. Truly. Should we say anything else about the Titanic? No, I feel like we've really wrapped it up. So the Titanic. Love it. Love it. It happened. It happened. It was sad. And it didn't happen until it I happened. really have to pee. And who did it? Um, um, the captain. The captain. Okay, great. <laughs> the captain. The captain did it. That's the truth of the Titanic that yeah, we that discovered. Yeah, that he should have fucking chilled out and listened to somebody else's opinion for once in his life. He and I hope we get served by his estate. Every every man behind him is a woman that he's not listening to. And, and that's on Speak facts. on that. And that's on facts. But yeah, Guys, thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much. Joy. Thank you for joining on the, the, the oh, ride. Oh, you're drunk. I'm wasted. <laughs> Guys, thanks for listening to Truth Tannic season one. We've yeah. had the mo I've had the most fun. I've literally had so much fun. I'm going to miss recording this. I know. Because you guys are getting this episode probably in like, what, like late December? We're in November right now. I know, like, what am I going to do in December? I know. We have to do a celebratory lunch or yeah, dinner. We'll oh, and if you're in Toronto, come see uh, Titanic at Hot Docs. Yes. December 20th. December 20th at... It's like six. It's like six p.m. It's a fun vibe. Come say hi. Yeah, come and say hi. And if you're hi. Rachel Ziegler, message us. Show, message us. Message us. We are desperate. And We're as desperate. Always, as always, email us if there's a Salem witch trial fact you want us to include. Yes, if you a are time to tell Salem us. witch trial girly and you have any book recommendations, documentary yes, rec rec recommendations, send them to us. We need them. Send us us either the email truthtanicgmail.com or just DM us on, on Instagram. Instagram. Yeah. We'll probably Well, you can't it. DM me because I've closed my DMs because people have been nasty. You so can DM close Blair. your DMs? Yeah. Oh my God, Only I the should people do that. that don't follow me. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wait, you can do that? Yeah, I'll show you how. Okay. People were being really mean. People were being, people were being very mean on oh. account of political opinions I've expressed. Oh no. <laughs> oh, no. Um, uh -oh. So yeah, you can just close it. So nobody can message me anymore if I haven't already messaged you back. Okay. Which is not the best, but message Blair. You can DM Rob. me. Comment on a reel. Comment uh, on a reel. Yeah, oh, comment that's a good on idea. A reel. Okay, social media manager Rob Aaron. Comment on something. You know what? Just We want we'll to know. It. We'll make find a reel it. or something. Uh, soliciting that. <laughs> yeah, we'll be soliciting some opinions All right. via reels. Anyway, this has been such a blast. Truly. Thank you. Aye, aye, Captain. Aye, aye, Captain. We'll see you next year. See you next year. Bye. Bye.